Let me remind myself what the topic is today. Oh, yeah, yeah, AI and politics, right? Kind of, kind of a lot already happening in the, in the space of media and politics this week. I don't know if you want to talk about, you know, the Tucker situation and the Don Lemon situation. Do you have any thoughts there? I kind of want to start with that. Old, uh, old sucker Carlson. <laughs> um, dude, I don't know. I actually, I, I, I saw the Tuckle, uh, the Tuckle, the Tuckle, the Tuckle Carlson, the Tuckhold, the, t- <laughs> the Tucker Carlson story. I was shocked because obviously he is the butter on the toast that is Fox News. Um, a disgusting, a disgusting fetid butter as it as it is. But I was shocked because I'm like, dude. I know so many people who are Republicans, kind of, but they really love Tucker Carlson, and that's like right. kind of what what had them hooked in. Which I, I've had all kinds of like semi anthropological theories on why that is because he speaks like an infant. Like mm-hmm. if you if you really just kind of like take yourself out of the story a little bit, he has like this like. You know, it's like a, it's a pretty it's it's very childlike. And uh, yeah, it's like it's like kid experiencing the the aftershocks of a temper tantrum voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know anything about Dong Lemon, but uh, uh, they got rid of those two guys. I don't know. Do you know anything about it? I don't know anything about it, really. Is it the Dominion thing? Or they, he was it, they 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 asked him because of some kind of libel situation with the with dominion was that the word on the street i think that that was a lot a lot of it uh i do know that there were a lot of texts that came out during the dominion situation where he just said a lot of you know mean and nasty and crude and vulgar things about the higher ups at fox news and he just didn't have any respect for them Uh, so there might have been some like some like personal you know beef between him and the upper management and you know it seems Also, like, the thing is that, like, Tucker had the biggest audience, but he didn't necessarily make the most money because so many of the advertisers fled his segment. And so he had, like, my (laughs) pillow. you know? Like, that was, like, the quality of the advertising. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think that that was a large part of it, too. Out of this whole situation, I don't really care too much about about the Don Lemon. That, to me, that situation is just kind of boring. The the whole, like, CNN, you know, world is just boring to me. But... uh, I, I read this piece by Ross Douthat, I think that's how you say it, in the, the New York Times. It was called The Tucker Realignment. And let me just paraphrase like what the gist of Tucker, this article Tucker was. Tucker retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, Ross Douthat, he has this view that how Tucker became so popular was just taking whatever the mainstream narrative was and going against it. So if the mainstream narrative was uh, Trump is terrible, he's going to say Trump is awesome. If the narrative is vaccines work, he's going to be skeptical and say, no, they don't. If, you know, if if it's immigrants are helping the economy, he's going to say immigrants are hurting the economy. That's like his whole thing. And what's fascinating to me about that is that one, I think that is true from, from the very minimal exposure I do have to, to Tucker Carlson. But I see that same exact phenomenon in a lot of the independent YouTube media world, like the, the type of shit that I listen to, right? Like, you know, uh, uh, Breaking Points with Crystal and Sauger. Like, I still listen to them every now and then. That's basically what they do. Like, if CNN or the New York Times is a big story, they're going to be skeptical of it. But if some, you know, fringe-ish character in the media has some kind of like hot take and maybe it's a little bit like, uh, you know, too hot for the mainstream media. They're going to be all about it. They're going to they're gonna just love that. And I totally get that, like, because that draws me in, right? And so, like, mm-hmm. I see why how Tucker draws in people with that mm-hmm. view. At the same time, like, that view doesn't inherently bring anybody closer to the truth. In fact, right. it might, you know, big picture take people further away from the truth because of the knee jerkness of it. But it gets know. them in the door. Yeah. Are you drawn to that, that perspective at all? I mean, do you listen to, to any media that like does that, that you notice? I'm such a feel guy. I, yeah. uh, I, I don't, it's like content wise. I'm not, 
I, I don't care that much what they're talking about. It's the vibe I'm getting off of them. If someone feels like they're infantilizing themselves or me, like Tucker Carlson, I can't even listen to it for a second. Even if he's got good points, even if it feels like he's talking about something that's relevant to me, the feel is just so off that I can't yeah. I can't fuck with it. It's the same reason I can't fuck with Matthew Inglacius. <laughs> like Matthew the Skexy Inglacius. Like I'm always waiting for Matthew Inglacius to be like, nah! ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um no, not really. I mean, can I, I can I ask who's a who's a guy whose feel is 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 something that draws you in? Because like Matt yeah. Iglesias, I totally one thousand percent get it. I also find his thing kind of endearing, and so I'm okay with it. Oh, even though like I I absolutely understand. But who's somebody who's who has a mannerism or whatever that you just like find so silky and smooth you can't deny it? Who who is my who's my soothing? Who's my oh soothing? god! I wish I could guess. I can't even guess to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. I think you like it's, you like comedy though. Somebody who's maybe comedic. Has a comedic I do. Edge. Okay, so com- com- comedians is different. I'm trying to think of political pundits. I, there's comedians I could rattle off like a list of like five comedians that I find soothing in a, in a certain way, but but political pundits, I I I tire of them. I tire of them quickly. Like even Rogan. Like Rogan <laughs> used to be kind of my my bedrock of like soothing, soothing and intellectually engaging conversation. And now he just sounds like such a bitch, dude. Yeah. I mean, no shade. I do he love Joe Rogan all the time. That's just he all just, he, he just, just complains. He just such complains a baby. So much. It's crazy how like his whole thing is like mental toughness and then just being like, but also, you know, but yeah. also the woke mind virus, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, dude, fucking pick one. <laughs> you know? well, what, do you, what do you think of Bill Maher? Speaking of the woke mind virus and Stephen I don't mind Bill. I don't, mind, okay. I, don't, I don't mind Bill Maher. I don't mind, mind Bill Maher or, um, or, uh, oh, Dennis Miller. You know, they both have I don't like, know very, him. who's he? You know, Dennis Miller. Dennis we, Miller. We grew up on, we grew up on Dennis Miller. Um, Dennis Miller is like comedian slash, uh, you know, political pundit. He was on Saturday Night Live. There's like, uh, Oh, I never I watched SNL growing up, so I totally missed honest. him. I think he was on SNL. He's probably at least a writer, but um, no, I mean, I don't mind affected voices. John Stewart, I, I like in small doses. His, small, he, though. Me too. He, I, yeah, he, he's he tires me. He, he's yeah, a little histrionic for my yeah. for my taste, you know, like and like how he has his calculated pauses and shit like this. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I cannot yeah, deal yeah. with that. Everything oh, he does. Oh, is, Terry Gross. NPR's oh. NPR's oh, okay. very own Terry yes. Gross, dude. The sound of dude, the song of silence for my soul, man. Like, dude, an absolute. Oh, oh, uh, uh, who's the other guy on on our local NPR? Bob. Um, oh. he's on Up First. Uh, with, I know who you're uh, talking about. You know who I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Um, Bob something. Who's he's the Kresden? Cr- Krasley? Kresler? Who's yeah, that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Is that the same and guy I'm thinking of? I think so. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He's on up first yeah, he's with, good. with Aisha Roscoe, who just always cracks me up. Love love Aisha. Loves me some Aisha Roscoe, dude. She's like <laughs> she's awesome. Um let me let me oh. ask one more. Uh, Scott Galloway. Do you like Scott Galloway? Yeah, dude. Yeah. All the dude, NPR I find to be maybe it's just my um maybe I'm just white to the core, dude. I just got I just got that I'm a dude, I'm a Twinkie with that cream filling, man. I just <laughs> I just like those small calculated pauses of, of, and 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 dulcet tones of the NPR of the NPR staff, dude. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Wait, let me, let me, let me tell you something. I want to fucking, before we get into the, 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 the mini meat of whatever we're talking about today, I just, I, I just listened to Up First this morning. Um, I'm so fucking tired of this war in Ukraine, dude. I'm so, like, every week or so a story comes out where I'm just like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Like, how is this still happening? Like, Mm. this is, this is... I think we are fully, we are approaching World War II level, like, like necessity to intervene. I think Mm -hmm. we're actually, 
we're not at a, I think maybe you mean with like the civilian strikes sort of thing. Yeah, happening? Dude, yeah, that was cause it's, it's not, like. it's not an ethnic genocide. And so there's not a, um, I think that that is like, uh, so egregious morally that people find it necessary to intervene when there's like an ethnic genocide or maybe just that once because that shit actually kind of does happen on a cyclical basis mm-hmm. um, that we don't care about but uh, god damn it dude cruise missile hits uh, hits a Ukrainian apartment complex and I'm listening to this mom fucking being like I, I'm hoping my daughter survived and then they they check back with her next day and they're like, no, we found her ear. We found the little teeny earrings that she was wearing burnt to a crisp. And I'm just wow. like, and I was like, God damn it, dude. Like reporting is doing its job when it pisses you off for the right mm-hmm. reasons. You Very know, like, like yeah. to kind of tie back into the Tucker Carlson thing. There's something there's something really dastardly about arousing outrage for dumb culture war shit. You know, for being like, San Francisco is a shithole, you right. know, but then it's like, you know, if you got somebody that has like somber boots on the ground reporting about a fucking Ukrainian mother that just lost her child, like, dude, like we got it. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what the answer is. Obviously, we're funding the shit out of the Ukrainians and they have <laughs> I do watch on Reddit. There's like a pretty sweet subreddit of Ukrainians using like American war technology it's 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 very satisfying because mm. they've got really badass shit now mm. because you know everybody's giving them stuff but at the, i'm like god damn it dude we we got to we got to wrap this up because we are at this point and i think um civilian casualty wise they're targeting civilians they're tar- they're they're a cruise missile at a fucking apartment complex in 2023 like and nobody's and everybody's just kind of like uh you know all oh, they but they've got nukes i'm like dude if north korea was fucking around like this as like a small homogenous country that has nuclear capability but isn't fully you know kind of lit on that level we would have wiped them out by now they're, mm-hmm. they're like half their country would be gone you know what i mean it's like i don't know i'm i'm outraged today peter Just soothe me i mean i guess <laughs> the the moral response isn't necessarily to hit whatever button that kills a ton of Russians either. I mean, my humanitarian, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. impulses are just to like, (laughs) like, this is, this is between politicians and uh, Mm. the innocence of all the countries, even if people get riled up in Russia to be anti-Ukraine, that's just because their government prop, you know, did so successful propaganda against them. Um, I I don't know. Like I, I have no idea what the answer is, but you're totally right that like, if Russia just didn't have nuclear weapons, one, this wouldn't have happened. Oh. Two, it would have been over half an hour into it, you know? Dude, 100%. It's only that fear of nuclear weapons. And, I mean, that's the whole thing where it's just like, God, I, I know that nuclear weapons have kind of been a really successful deterrent for a lot of wars, but I don't know. It's This is like the ugly side of that equation where Russia can basically do whatever it wants as long as it doesn't attack a NATO country. It can do literally whatever it wants to any country it wants. And like, oh, they have... It's it's just disgusting. And it's really horrible. I We're mean, gonna... I know that there are a lot of smart people working on this. And I, I feel like I'm, I'm not qualified at all to really say what we should or shouldn't do. But it's so just like depressing to read these stories. I totally agree. We will enter an age sometime in the next 50 to 100 years, I'm fairly certain of this, where we just roll into uh, nuclear-capable countries and fully dismantle them as states. Like, Mm -hmm. I think that this is probably one of the last times that we're going to need to learn this lesson about, Mm -hmm. about appeasement. You know, I mean, like we learned that we've learned this lesson in every war that we've been in. Basically, so, so do you do you think that that the second we did something really aggressive in Russia, whatever it is, you don't think that they would just blow up New York City? I don't think so. I mean, I and think then Rita that Rita wouldn't blow up Moscow. You don't think that would happen? Because I mean, that's what they say would actually definitely happen. I don't know. I guess who knows, right? Like I'm not I'm not in I'm not I'm not in the seat of power that would know the actual answer to that question. I, my sense is probably not. I think that mm-hmm. nuclear war is so terrifying for everyone other than like a a crazed cancer-ridden despotic leader, you know. And apparently Putin is really hard to get to. 
but god damn it it's like it's like that uh it's like the saddam hussein kind of routine where it's like for how many years was the kind of refrain of the common man like do we really need to be in iraq or can we just spend can we just send some sick special forces people in to kill this guy mm -hmm. and i feel like dude we gotta assassinate this guy like somebody's got to get in there and just blow his fucking brains out because at the end of the day even but they like, say that the people next in line might be worse and there's a lot of them and they all might God, be worse damn it you know? man that's that's like the the really 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 weedy situation oh it's giving me a headache let's talk yeah. about ai because it's this kind of is really optimistic. upsetting me today <laughs> so ai might destroy the world but still more optimistic than thinking about putin oh. ugh um, well, so yeah, okay, top story, top story today, guys. <laughs> um, I want to talk about this article that was in The Atlantic. Wait, let me pull up the title of the article so I don't, I don't butcher it. Um, let me just tell you, while you do this, I, yeah, jammed, I, got I, I jammed with a guy yesterday that was using ChatGPT to do modal inversions on chord changes for songs oh. and, and help him write lyrics which I don't know how I so feel about that. <laughs> why, why, why doesn't you just have like AI do the rest of the work? I know. No, I'm I like, think that's, why I think even play the music at that point? <laughs> right. Right. No, I, I think that I'm, I'm totally all about like, like using AI as a tool. I think that that's super cool. And that is the future. I thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. And to be fair, the chord changes that he ended up playing me from that were good. Uh, hate saying that but they were they were good <laughs> should, should send some shit to listen to i'd be curious to hear what's happening there that's right. cool um well so this was the article uh, by nathan e sanders and bruce bruce schneider just wait until trump is a chatbot is the title mm. and this article is, is about what is you know what potentially could be a weird election coming up when we are you know, on all sides influenced by uh, the powers of AI. Let me let me just read a, a quick okay. quote from this article. Uh-huh. In the 2024 presidential election campaign, you can bank on the appearance of AI-generated personalized fundraising emails, text oh. messages from chatbots urging you to vote, and maybe even some deep fake campaign avatars. Future candidate candidates could use chatbot trained uh god i can't read future candidates could use chat chatbots trained on data representing their views and personalities to approximate the act of directly connecting with people so you know there are, this just paints so many pictures in my mind of you know how, like right now you get dinged on your phone all the time with little text messages from people and this is long ass thing of text about like oh send us twenty dollars you know this could be the world where donald trump space Oh, you don't? Well, I get a lot of them. I've, I've like donated a little bit to shit and my email's out there. It's such a mistake. Don't ever put any, unless you really care, just don't fucking put your email in anything. Anyway, um, it's going to be, it's going to be Donald Trump's face or whoever, their fucking face saying, hi, Peter, how are you today? Guess what? Those evil Hey, Democrats. Peter. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot do it. Hey, Peter. Hey. Hey. <laughs> That's very or, or Joe Biden. Hey Peter. Hey. Hey. Hey there, buddy. <laughs> hey. We're we're fighting for the soul of America. There's there's that where we are going to be bombarded by these, you know, AI, you know, bots. I'm I'm assuming like directly connecting to us. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, so in the in the previous election, this has already happened where uh fundraisers used AI to predict who's most likely to donate and then reaching out to them directly rather than, I mean, we're, we're so far from the world where everyone gets blanketed with a little, you know, letter in the mail. Right. I mean, this right. is it's very sure. targeted yep. now. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be like, it's going to be very manipulative. I'm sure. Um, there's also just on the, like the, the, the media element of this already the Republicans just this week sent out a uh, or released a video where all the images were AI generated. And this was like the oh. scary thing about like, oh, it's 2024 and Joe Biden is elected as president. Um, so, you know, China just invaded Taiwan and, you know, on like all these horrible things. San Francisco. I love, 
just got closed Kam- down. <laughs> Kamala's president now. It's Kamala. Kamala. Like, you should you should watch the video just because like they they do very much highlight San Francisco as being shut down. You know the city shut yeah. down. As someone who dude, like, it's it's like uh, Kamala Harris like people like a uh, 3D rendered you know Kamala Harris like in like a super villain costume with a bunch of heroin needles and like standing over San Francisco covered in poop. <laughs> That's probably coming. you're probably giving them ideas right now, Devin. So be careful. Yeah, dude. Somebody put that in the chat GPT, man. Let me see what comes. Let me see what pops out. <laughs> well, so just to throw out some some thoughts about this situation, one thing that I kept thinking as I was reading these articles was just like, you know, the, the X factor here is always the humans in that, like, we're all still a human audience, fully, completely, 100% human beings on the other side of this. All it takes is like us to get kind of cynical about anything that pops up on our phones or our screens, just because we all know, like, like maybe this is really compelling. It's also fucking fake. And maybe this ad isn't only generated by a computer. Maybe it was generated by a malicious bot farm in Russia or whatever. You know, like the second those messages started to trickle down and the uh, the mm-hmm. avatar feeds that we're consuming just get a mm-hmm. little bit too over the top, mm-hmm. the whole thing may just like all of a sudden stop being worthwhile you know what i mean, I mean we I, don't I, I don't know but that that is the, the x factor here that everyone is assuming this is actually going to work because we're not going to become super cynical about it um well, I, we don't we don't yeah. listen to i mean traditional advertising is struggling so much in the modern age for exactly that reason that we have as as humans and as cultural consumers we have this fantastic power of rejection yeah. right like we're able to just completely ignore advertisements in a plentitude of situations and it actually takes something pretty tremendous to kind of break through our general kind of like you know you just kind of go away men in black style when ads come on youtube or on tv or whatever i mean i can't i can't remember the last time i bought something from an i ad, like an I like an ad this. on a video I've said, I've said this before and, and, you know, it's worth repeating. I, I think is that like, for some reason, Facebook has dialed it Dog. in. Dog. Facebook fucking shit. dude. They, you know dude, it's, I, it's why I specifically said radio, television, and YouTube because <laughs> Facebook and, and to some degree, Instagram, and it's but, yeah. but particularly the products that they offer me on Facebook, I, like it's, it's it it is a little freaky where I'm like I didn't know that existed and I didn't know I wanted something this bad, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I only I literally only see it on Facebook and Instagram where mm-hmm. it's it's shit that like I exactly I didn't know I needed and then all of a sudden I can't get it out of my brain and you do see it again and again and until you fucking buy it which I have Dude, that little done. the little Home Depot the little Home Depot side scroller bar. Dude, just has me nailed, man. Fucking I can't believe I don't, have, I don't have that in an order from Home Depot, sadly, oh. all the time. I, oh. that's, they haven't got Home, me on that. Home Depot <laughs> and Granger Supply. Fucking, they just, they, they know, they know the, they know the colors of the wind, dude, for my, oh, for my, man. for my heart. Well, um, aside okay. from that, do you, do you kind of, do you, it sounds like you're kind of sympathetic to this view that, there's a it, it if it's not dialed in just completely correctly, it could totally be a moot point. I mean, I think that that's totally a possibility. I think that it's gonna do exactly what it did in the last election cycle. It's gonna catch mm-hmm. a bunch of dumb middle-aged people and most old people. Yes. And then most and then most young people, most people our age or younger. I'm 33. Um, you know, I think most people in our age cohort and younger, with the exception of like people that are just not. Uh, that just kind of aren't tech, didn't didn't develop technological literacy in the last 20 years, which, of which there is a sizable percentage of people. And I I don't mean to say they're dumb, but I do mean to say that they probably don't have a super nuanced way that they're consuming content or that they're able to fact check things in a meaningful way. People that are just kind of like more uh, more on the side of emotional appeal. You know what I mean? Are, are susceptible to emotional appeal, which I think we all are to some extent. But yeah, I think most folks in our age cohort and younger have 
boundaries and walls erected towards most varieties of digital content, understanding that they're going to be manipulative in nature. Mm -hmm. Deep fake stuff is particularly compelling. I mean, AI, AI generated stuff is particularly compelling. I'm, I'm a little, there, we're getting to this point where there's AI artwork that's being generated that is, whether it knows it or not, it's taking into account part of the, uh, part of like the 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 zeitgeist of art in human culture. It's use it's utilizing techniques, methods, rendering, you know, and it's rendering things that kind of speak to you on a weirdly subliminal level. It, you know, it's like it's it's using images, it's layering images. I mean, I'm thinking of a, a a photo that I saw yesterday on Facebook where it was like, oh, check out what this guy designed, and it was like the front. It was all an all marble front of a house, but it was impossible. There's no way you could do that out of marble. It was really compelling. And if mm. you could do that out of marble, you would be, it would blow your fucking mind, mm -hmm. right? Um, so there is like a weirdness to how compelling some of these AI renderings are, are and they're going to get better. They're going to get better fast. Oh, yeah. They're gonna yeah, like get... already the, the avatars are already so lifelike. It's Whoa, crazy. Yeah. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg did one the other day. It was just like a video floating around online that I've, I've seen a couple times where it's like him talking his avatar. And it's like, it's crazy. It, it might as well be him. You know, yeah, it's, I it's watched the, the Mario movie with, uh, with my girlfriend a couple days ago. And like, there's a lot of moments in that movie where you go, whoa, because you're seeing like a, a question mark box or something rendered as if it's a real object. And, well, it, and, it, yeah. and it does blow your mind because you're used to seeing it as like a 16 bit object. And it looks, mm -hmm. it looks like they, it's Star Wars style, like made it out of something, but it's 100% mm -hmm. digitally rendered. Um, Look, man, I think, yeah, like that's my 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 overarching sense about AI generated content in general is that it's just going to catch people that it caught the last cycle. You know, I think people do you, do you think yeah. that this makes it more or less likely for outsider candidates to get an edge? I'm thinking slightly maybe more just because I think that this is going to maybe upend the whole advertising industry. And you know how mm. in general to make it in national politics, you need there's like a number to it. It's like four yeah. million dollars to even get your name out there. Right. It's yep. it's an, not a huge, but maybe it might maybe it's more than that. That sounds low, actually. But it's it's like not a ton, ton, ton of money, but it is like kind of a ton of money if you're a normie, you know? Yeah. What if all of a sudden that drops to two hundred thousand dollars, and if you have the right connections with people in Silicon Valley or whatever, you know, a couple of companies that can do this, these sorts of things, uh, what if all of a sudden you don't have to be a multi gazillionaire to run for politics? The political that's a, the, that's a potential, right? I think it's a potential, but I think we're in the midst of. It's funny. I just had a conversation about this this morning with my girlfriend. She was like, "Well, who else is going to run? You know, like against Joe Biden?" And I was like, "Oh, nobody can run against Joe Biden." And she was like, "What? What do you mean?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, like you can't. I mean, you could run as an independent candidate, but you can't get the Democratic. The Democratic Party will." do nothing for you if you run against joe biden in the next election in fact they'll probably actively work against you and so like the way that the political superstructure is set up it's like there's just so there's so few i mean there slots. are candidates right there's marianne williamson yeah. and a couple of people but they're not going to go anywhere you're right yeah no the no the democratic is not going to get behind no them. yeah the yeah. democratic party will suppress them to ev probably more than the Republican Party will try to suppress them. We'll right. probably spend more money trying to suppress like independent candidates running. Um, so I think that, yeah, it's possible. And I've seen the flutterings of it. I think Beto O'Rourke and Pete Buttigieg are kind of pretty good examples of people that are like uh, highly cogent, like viral po type politicians that have kind of started crawling their way up into the public consciousness mostly by merits of their ability to do like cute sound bitey stuff and like right. make a name for themselves uh, and by having like things go viral mm -hmm. um but you see that there is still quite like a glass ceiling to that there's you get to a certain level where the political you know structure in this country is either going to help you get to past that ceiling or they're going to block you there. And I don't think I, there I is. I do think, I do think there is the chance of 
and maybe AI is irrelevant to this, but I do think that there could be, quote, the right candidate. I remember mm. the second I saw Barack Obama on television, uh. um, and I was really young and I didn't pay attention oh. to politics at all. But I, I remember I was actually, oh, like, yeah. I, I have like a flashbulb memory, but I was at my uncle's house in Portland and I saw him speak on television and I was like, oh, he's going to become the president. And I put it this out of my mind, didn't even think about yeah. it. I was too young to vote. Yeah. And then he became president. And I and was Republicans shocked, were like that, too. You know? It was, They were like, you know what? He's black, but he's cool. He's he's cool though. You know what I mean? Like the way he really... presented himself, the way he talked, the he way the, the man, things he's he the said. Everything. He, yeah, and I mean, like Pete Buttigieg has some things going for himself, or what? So so is Beto. So does Gavin. Yeah. You know, but yeah. like nobody quite has. No, they're not on whatever that, that is. And yeah. AI can't give that to somebody necessarily. No, nah, he but had. That's that's a possibility. We could have somebody swoop in from that. Can I can I ask really quickly? I want to get your, yeah. your thoughts on the record of what what is your thought on Marianne Williamson? Just because a lot of people in my sphere are all about her. Never even heard the name. Shut up, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You got to get online more. Um, can I tell you about her really quick? And then yeah, you'll please. let me let me just get this on the record for myself. Um, yeah. <laughs> so she came out uh, last presidential cycle and she's kind of like on the stage with with andrew yang where he's kind of like what are you doing here you know sure. uh she was one of those candidates but she was like famous for all of these self-help woo-woo books that were mm. you know on the oprah bestsellers list and she was like buddies with oprah this sort of a thing um and she's very just like you know crystals and and the the, the stars aligning and you know positivity it's a lot, a lot of the shit but interestingly she says all the correct things to get young lefties excited. So myself and a lot of people um, were actually kind of like drawn into her. Okay. And so like uh, Crystal Ball and, and Sagar are, are both like very much wooed by her. Mm. Um, and she she's kind of like, you know, a younger, female, spunkier Bernie in a lot of ways. Oh, okay, uh, cool. And I'm even like semi-okay with her. The mm. thing that absolutely destroys her for me and that why I would never vote for her is she is, at least last I checked, unless this has changed recently, she she's is not hot at, enough for you. <laughs> she is, she is <laughs> adamantly against nuclear energy. Um, Let, ladies and gentlemen, like, that's a joke. Peter would never, Peter would never cast aspersions on a, on a, on the political aspirations of a person based on their attractiveness alone. Myself, hey man, I just, hand. I just want to feel about how uh, Barack Obama, you know, she's a dog, <laughs> she's a dog. You got a dog. <laughs> Looks uh, like a dog. Barks like a dog. She's I, a dog. I, I will honestly say I think that we're we're all influenced by the way people look I, by the attractiveness yeah. of the candidate. I think it's actually yeah. a huge factor. Barack Obama. He could get it. <laughs> Trump, Trump knows if he didn't have his fucking hair, he wouldn't be as appealing. He knows oh, that. Dude, you know, he hangs on to that seen, with dear life. Have you seen him without the makeup and the hair? Yes. Dude, he looks like Emperor Palpatine. He full. Mm. He looks That's full on just like... Eh, power. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Please continue with Marianne Williamson. You should, you should check her out. I mean, anybody okay. out there worth worth actually legitimately oh, she's not into nuclear energy what is going on with nuclear energy dude people guys yeah we've had a couple of 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 mishaps and it's contaminated a little bit of 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 soil and land places we can't go back to it's a bummer but of sort good, of kind of we can go back good. to a lot of you can drink the yeah. water she much shit like that like you know yeah like good grief guys <laughs> like nuclear energy is the answer like yes. we need, we do need to figure out a little bit more advanced uh, ideas around storing and reusing the waste. That is something, and there is there 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 are ways that it the the waste can be reused and recycled. The New York way. Times had a big piece this week about mm. why the the waste isn't a problem, and it's it's oh. it was so refreshing to see that in that you know caliber of a publication. Um, like the quote mainstream media is like really actually starting to embrace nuclear energy, which is like kind of super exciting. Maybe the coolest thing happening right now in the world. Like the public has got to get, we've got to get to this point as a public, right? Well, like as a, as a, as a, as a cultural mass of people where we're able to separate the, uh, the, the, the pharmaceutical industry and the oil industry from 
like we need to be able to recognize the propaganda of those industries yeah. and the way that it's had its inky fingers injected into society for the last hundred years. Nuclear industry, literally, there's no other, there's no reason why we would be anti-nuclear as a society other than the propaganda of the oil industry. Same thing with a lot of natural medicines and food as medicine with the pharmaceutical industries. Like they're two of the largest propagandizing bodies in the in the world. And they affect discourse in our country at a completely disproportionate level. We should have a nuclear power plant in every every viable area, man. Like this is insane. We mm -hmm. don't need we don't need any other we don't need any other source of fuel besides natural gas for certain applications. And then every other, you know, we do need gasoline and diesel for, you know, like specialized industrial applications. There's certain things mm -hmm. that electricity just kind of can't do, or it can, but it doesn't make any sense. But like as a as a as a consumer, as like a as a as an average person, 90% of your power is electrical and of that, 100% of it should be coming from renewable resources, nuclear being at the top, man. Right now, if you drive a Tesla, you have to drive it for 55,000 miles to break even on the carbon because of the carbon footprint that was made when, when that car was made and the battery and everything in China, it was put together on coal fuel. Yeah. So you're driving, you're polluting the environment like crazy and you have to 55,000 miles. That's that's like a lot. Not uh, to, to mention to break even. Although interestingly, not, I will I will note that China is right now making a massive push into nuclear. So that actually mm -hmm. kind of might that problem might solve itself, which is exciting. But um, I, yeah, I will we, say we, too, we have, to, we have to yeah move towards nuclear. I totally you, agree. Like it also in order to pay, repay your karmic debt for the child laborers that mined all the cobalt to go into your Tesla, yeah. you're gonna have to spend several lifetimes as a centipede or roly poly to mm -hmm. just get back to being on the karmic wheel in a way that makes sense. That being said, you know, obviously we're both probably podcasting on devices that are being run by lithium ion batteries that have cobalt in them right now um you know moral issues but you know what though nuclear uh famously devoid of moral quandaries dude <laughs> like shockingly nobody yeah, like gets every hurt <laughs> everything has costs and nothing is perfect but it's pretty damn close yeah um i've got to wrap this up I'm already a little late for some engagements here, but hey, Devin, good talks as always. And yeah. until next time, hey, we'll talk hey, soon. hey, Peter, share with the yeah. share with our podcast listeners how you get your teeth so white. I don't know, actually. Maybe it's a light. I, I brush two or three times a day. You know, <laughs> two or three. I work from home, so sometimes after lunch, I'm like. I feel like brushing my teeth and it's not even like a crazy thing or, you know, I'm not like way into hygiene necessarily, but it's just kind of like, I work from home. I'm, I'm always here, you know, after lunch. Pod but, podcast yeah. listeners weigh in in the comments. How can I get my <laughs> teeth as white as, as Peter Clark's teeth there? I brush twice a day and I mean, they're the same color as my skin on this podcast, man. I'm battling Dude, crippling insecurities. I, as I we haven't. Speak. I haven't been to the dentist since pre-COVID, so I need to fix that too. I've moved. I had a baby. A lot has happened, but I'll I'll get on that one of these days. Hey man. Well All uh, right, Pete. Till next time. <laughs>